as MD or as a keyboard MD, obviously I'm playing a lot of the time, um, but then I'm also um, conducting in the bars when I'm not playing, or sometimes conducting with one hand, playing with the other. Um, but we also have an MD mic um, so that I can actually talk directly to the band because everyone's on headphones. Um, particularly because the percussion setup is so enormous, of, often he's having to play with his back to me. So I couldn't just conduct. I mean, we, thankfully we have mirrors in this room, so sometimes he uses the mirrors to see me conduct, but often um, I can just speak directly. And also if something goes wrong, I can kind of go and, and then we land if the singer gets out of time or what have you. So the MD mic is really, really important. Um, but then, it's all very heavily programmed as a keyboard chair. So, I mean, there's tiny little bits of piano, but it's just used as a, a, as a color. So there's huge amounts of keyboard programming. So I have 350 odd different patch changes. Each patch Ooh. might have three or four different sounds within that one patch. So for example, if we look at the beginning of the show, um, I'm playing with my right hand um, muted trumpets and in the left hand piano and bassoon um, but I could be playing anything from clarinets to horns to you name it um, just to fill in all the orchestral parts because obviously it was written for a big orchestra and so nine is a very ambitious number um, to attempt it with um, and so I have three pedals on the keyboard um, one is a sustain pedal that, that you'd have on a normal piano, but then you have a patch change pedal, and literally in the first number, I have something like 34 changes of sound in one number. Um, and then I also have a volume pedal, so that um, just like the real violinist or flute or um, whoever, they will phrase things off and uh, things get softer and um, louder, I can do the same. So. Um, so the challenge is it when I'm playing a second flute part to the flautist is that I'm matching the same phrasing. Um, so when she breathes, I have to breathe by taking my hand off the keyboard. When she phrases off, I have to use the volume pedal. So the, it's a very complex setup. Mm -hmm. um, I also have a script on the side just in case. Um, I know the score pretty well now, so I just have kind of warning cues um, in, um, in for each number. Mm -hmm. So literally you know after a number we'll all we'll relax for a bit and then i'll say you know right stand by number two mm -hmm. and then on the cue literally just go one two and then we'll start or what have you so so we're all on cans so we have these very clever devices so that each instrument including the voices um the, the things that are on click track um uh all sorts of stuff each that we can each control um, the volumes individually, so we can have our own custom mix. Obviously, I have the uh, voices quite high, so that I can hear um, clearly what's going on. And I also have a TV monitor in front of me of the stage, so that I can see things. So often, I'm having to time things with what's going on stage as well. Um, but most of the time, it's just done by um, listening to cue lines. Um, so. Uh, then also I have a camera that's constantly on me um, that I think there's seven screens in the theatre itself, uh, three front of house and four backstage um, just because um, they need to be able to see me to cue them to sing. So for example one of the main things is um, uh, Somewhere which the full company sings and uh, literally there's just a horn note and then I have to count three, four, and most people start singing it off stage. So they're all gathered around uh, the MD monitors backstage, so that they're watching me conduct, and then I will actually conduct the whole of the first section, just so everyone's in time. Um, so part of the rehearsal period has been kind of drilling them so they know what to expect. So, um, so it's important as an MD is to give the same cues every single performance so that no one's confused.